all love Xcode and Eclipse. <laughs> that's all we're going to talk about. Totally kidding. Uh, forewarned, uh, somebody told me I'm a spaz. So get ready. Uh, this show is about to happen. <clears throat> so anyways, we're all here because uh, we all love JavaScript for the most part. No kidding about that. Uh, but the talk is mobile applications using JavaScript and the Ionic framework. The Ionic framework. So getting started, uh, I just want to give a quick show of hands. Who's used or heard of Cordova or PhoneGap? Nice, nice. Who's heard or used Ionic? OK, good. So the numbers are a little shifted, more on the phone gap, less than Ionic. So uh, I've got stickers here. I've got a raffle for those. Congratulations, you've all won. <laughs> you all get a sticker. Uh, so starting out, <clears throat> I've got a few assumptions I'm going to make about you guys. So one, you, you know HTML, CSS, probably JavaScript. You want to make some iOS, some Android apps. If you're still you know, having fun, make some Blackberry stuff. They support that. Uh, but you may or may not understand Objective-C or Java or those native tools that you have to use. And I'm here to tell you that's OK, because I don't either. And I didn't want to when I started my mobile journey about two or so years ago. So I'm here to help you guys understand this, pass any knowledge I've learned so that you guys can make cool stuff that I've had some fun making and hopefully enjoy it as much as I have. Uh, the guys at Ionic have put together a great framework, so I want to talk about it and, and share that with you guys so you can go out here and make cool stuff. Uh, no, no objectives other than you guys learning. So if you have any questions, shout, shout them out at me, tweet them at me, run up here, you know, you can take the mic. Uh, but make sure you ask them, because I want you guys to learn this stuff. So getting started, uh, this, this education that I'm giving you is anything that I've learned. And I'm not saying it's correct. For the most part, it's what works. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, I'm still learning myself. So a lot of these things may be wrong. And you can laugh at me. I'm OK with that, because uh, I'm still learning. But I'm trying to help you educate everything that I have learned, that I've found that works. I want to share that with you. So again, if I make some bad mistakes, anything like that, laugh at me, please, because I want to laugh too. Anyways, getting started, uh, most of the mobile apps you use these days are going to be CRUD apps, you know, you're going to put in some data, maybe like Pandora where you're seeing like some artwork and your music's playing, uh, you know, Instagram, you're taking pictures. It's for the most part not too intensive. It's something that we all use day to day. Um, and then you have things that are graphics intensive like games or those simulators or those things where you fly into the moon, you know, stuff like that. That's kind of about where we fall in mobile apps. Uh, most times you'll, you'll either write native. Objective-C or Java. Um, there's some other guys that do like Ruby Motion, where you write Ruby and it translates into Objective-C in Java. Or Titanium is another one that's famous. Or Xamarin. That's a new one that's come up. Uh, and this last option we have is writing that JavaScript that has native bridges that other people have written. That's Cordova. And so you write JavaScript that's interpreted that runs down to native functionality for the most part. And this is kind of too much, but don't get worried. You've got the whole scale here. So native, where you can do everything. You can access everything. You can do App Store stuff. And then you've got HTML, where you just pop open Chrome or Safari, and you go view some website for the most part. It's still an app, right? And then we have this hybrid, is what I'm kind of focusing on in this talk, which is you take HTML and you wrap it into a native web view, and then you download that as your app. So when I say hybrid, that's what it means, is we're writing HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we're packaging that up. And then that's what's running as the app. How does that work? It, it goes kind of like this, where you write your HTML and your CSS, JavaScript. That's loaded in the na native web view, which then you have native plugins that talk to that web view, so like camera, other things like that. And then you have your native implementation of that app that you load onto the uh, Google Play or uh, App Store or what have you. So one thing you're probably thinking by now is, when do I use Ionic, or when do I use uh, Cordova for the most part? Well, before, let's talk about native. So native, you're going to write something that's like a, a game. You're going to write it in Objective-C or, or Java for the most part. You don't have to worry about this translation that happens from the web view layer, things like that. Uh, or you have some niche use cases where you need extreme performance. Or maybe you just like writing Objective-C. And you're probably not in this room talking. You're hearing this. So 
but most importantly, you have to support multiple code bases. Uh, so just before this talk, I had a friend come up to me, a uh, guy I used to work with, and he was so excited. He, he made an Ionic app, and he's like, I load it on my Android, I load it on iOS. It's so awesome. Right? It's like, okay, so we're on to something here, guys. We can't afford, or maybe you can afford, to support multiple code bases. But if you're like me, you're playing a small shop, you're doing it yourself, that's when we're going to go with hybrid, folks. When you've got a CRUD app, for the most part, you know, you're know, you putting in data, you're looking at data. I hate to say, we're not breaking any new grounds here, right? You're just an app, right? And you want to support multiple platforms. I don't want to write just an iOS code base and then only have iOS, and now I have half my users not using the app. So I want one code base that runs, for the most part, everywhere, even on BlackBerry. Uh, so I just want to add in here, this, you know, if, you're, if you're interested in international support, things like that, like phones that are out there, Cordova and PhoneGap support that as well. So you can hit all the overseas people as this. So hybrid just opens the door for any platform to go onto. So again, I said you can still use native-like functions in your HTML app. And what I mean by that is like camera, your GPS, say you want to do Facebook login. Let's say you want to do geofencing and know when the user goes somewhere. There's plugins that you'll download and install to your Cordova platform that let you do that. And the way that works is you write it, you just say like uh, Cordova.camera.takePicture. And then you get a native JavaScript callback that gives you that uh, file on your phone. So you don't have to worry about, oh, did I, did I close out my uh, memory for this camera thing or all that nasty native stuff that you probably don't want to do, right? So uh, guys at Ionic, uh, great group of guys, they're really doing some cool stuff. And, and they're opening the doors for us to do all this. And they've kind of called it the hybrid development kit. So let's talk about what the hybrid development kit is for the most part. For one, you're going to be using the Cordova or PhoneGap utilities that they provide you. And you're still going to need the native SDKs because we are still compiling down natively. We just interact only with the JavaScript layer for what we care about. So you still need to set up Cordova and Xcode and the Android SDK for the most part. That's how we'll get started. So again, this is really busy, but I'm going to hold your hand, so we're going to do this. But for the most part, you write your web app code here. And that's translated through this JavaScript bridge down to the web view. So it's Safari on iOS, and it's, for the most part, the Chrome browser on Android. From then, your native web view talks to your native plugins here. So these are all the ones that you can download or Cordova's given you already. You can also go make your own, and there's plenty of ways to find them. We'll talk about that later. And that is what's called to the native operating system. So this is Android or uh, iOS for the most part. So we're all up here. Specifically, we're mostly here. So we're doing the stuff that we already know and love to do. HTML and JavaScript. I feel like I'm repeating myself there. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I want you guys to understand that PhoneGap is Cordova. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of misconceptions about you know, what's the difference between PhoneGap and Cordova. They're the same thing. The only difference is uh, Cordova is just an open source project that any one of you can go contribute to and pull code and look at it. PhoneGap <laughs> runs off of Cordova, and then PhoneGap provides additional things that you'll use. But whenever I'm talking through this, if I say PhoneGap, here Cordova. If I say Cordova, here PhoneGap. Because essentially they're the same thing. They do all the same thing. Had to clarify that. But uh, so getting started, uh, two years ago, before Ionic was around, uh, I made my own hybrid app for a startup here in town. Uh, we rolled our own. It, it was basically a free combination of jQuery mobile um, and a few other plugins that we'd thrown together, but we just ripped everything out from jQuery. It was, it was really not fun to work with. You know, we had to recreate what do the native page transitions look like. You know, you can still use jQuery mobile or Cinchas as it's known, or I think the other one's Onsen. They provide a lot of this native-like functionality. But most importantly, Ionic. Yeah. So let's start diving more into Ionic and looking at that. So when you get started, if you leave here, which you will, and you're going to create a Cordova app, and you're going to go and try to do some things, and you're going to enjoy it, but you're going to have some of these problems that you run into. So one is you've got to get your SDK set up, and now you've got to worry about the you know, other guys that get on the project. They need to know what to do. And you've got to have, uh, you know, when they open up the app, where's it going to go, and what's the state going to look like, and all these other things that you have to worry about. Well, lucky you, 
Ionic solved all of these for you. And what I mean by that is they've given you all these, these tools to use to take the barrier down so that you can just download Ionic and just start working. They've got a Vagrant instance that already has SDK set up. They've got, uh, it uses AngularJS. So Ionic is built on top of AngularJS. So if you know AngularJS, congratulations. You know half of Ionic now. And it gives you native functionality, look and feel. It gives you SAS sheets that already set up. It gives you all these nice things that you just start writing code and start working on the app. And the thing that's important to you is the app. Not setting up all the stuff you need to do the app, but the app, right? That's what we really are here to do. We're not paid to just sit up and set up architecture for our app. So Ionics handle all of these things for us. So some other additional things it gives you is it gives you a lot of conventions that are set up. Like you'll start at this place. It also gives you, uh, like if you've ever used Safari before and you go and you tap in an input box and your keyboard slides up and the, your whole page just shifts up and you're like, what just happened? They give you tools to handle that, the keyboard that's built in. They give you native scrolling, like so instead when you scroll it just slowly fades up instead of like that really, it just follows your finger. So all these things that you're like, you'll probably bang your head like me, you know, two years ago, just boom, 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 boom. They've handled all this stuff for you guys. Um, and they've given a lot of uh, feedback from the community. Uh, I had another guy talk about the forums, how important they were. And so Iona gives you more of that. <clears throat> it also comes with icons, a whole sleuth of icons. Anything you ever want. You want to do some Bitcoin stuff? They got a Bitcoin icon, all right? <laughs> so uh, moving right along. Right off the bat, when you download Ionic and you start working with it, you're already on the happy path. That means you're, you're setting up, you can add a new page on there, throw in some controls. You've got half your app built. That's pretty cool. Uh, as I said before, it sets up all your buttons for you. It gives you a nice control set that have JavaScript delegates. And we'll talk more about that. But it, re it decreases the time between releases. And so my own experience was we built this app in our own custom framework. It took us, I don't know, a year and a half or so. Then I had this crazy fancy, I'm gonna go rebuild it in Ionic. I rebuilt it in Ionic, not complete, but for the most part, everything it had in the original app in probably about a month. So you take two years of work and you redo it in a month. If that speaks to anything, it should, because Ionic sets you on the happy path. So right away, there's a few commands you'll have to get started, and my assumptions here is also you know NPM. So you'll just say NPM install, You'll install Ionic in Cordova if you don't have it already. Then you'll just run this, uh, you'll say Ionic start, new app, and if you want, you can pass it a starter template. They've got templates that get you started in the right direction automatically. So here's just one I've already done, and this is an actual app here. So I've typed in Ionic start with tabs, the tabs uh, template, and right off, you get this app. So you can kind of see my native scrolling there, I've got tabs set up for me. I've got some nice uh, list items here that you know, when I click on, they do the hover state. You know, click on, I got a new state in my app that shows it on my tabs. Although you can't really see it, but this is shown selected. So I've already got tabs, I've got list items, I've got a back button that showed up. What kind of voodoo is this? But more importantly, I said state. Look, I go between my tabs, it knows where I was at. That's really cool. There's another template they give you. It's the slide, or the side menus template. So right away, you know how many apps have that little slide menu that you tap the little hamburger icon that so many people hate? Boom. I've got a side menu. I type one command to get this whole app set up for me. That's pretty awesome. Gives me all the different pages. I can swipe. Happy path, folks. Happy path. So moving right along. When I typed that command, there was a few things that were set up for me. It set up Bower, it configured itself to pull in the Ionic package at, at the current release it was at. It set up NPM to have a couple other packages help me out. It set up my SAS sheet, which I mentioned before, that has all the Ionic styles that you can overwrite with variables. It gives you a gold file to handle you know, running or uh, you know, to run the app in the browser. But most importantly, they gave you the boilerplate app that you'll probably start with. So let's, let's dive a little bit in that boilerplate. What does that look like? So one, it'll give you a www folder that has all the CSS, the images, 
all that stuff nicely set up for you. Three files that you'll probably want to dig into and look at yourself is in the JavaScript folder. So there's app.js that sets up the state, it gives you a ready event, uh, sets up what template goes with what state. It sets up controllers, so just AngularJS controllers for the most part. But it sets up like uh, some test data, so you can see kind of how you'll, you'll set your data up. If you haven't done AngularJS before, it'll give you a really good way to start. Um, that's neat. And it'll set up this services file so that going forward, you're going to reuse these services over and over, hopefully, if you're doing it right. So it kind of sets you down the happy path. Again, I'm just going to, it's my favorite word, happy path. <laughs> say it. Come on, let's all say it. <laughs> Uh, so what's the, what's the cycle like? Like when you run this command, you got to act great, but now how do you play with it? How do you work with it? You know, what do you do? So there's a first one, you can just say ionic serve. It loads it up in your browser for the most part, so you can use it there. You can run on native simulator, you just say ionic emulate iOS or Android, whichever one's your fancy. Or you can say ionic run. If your phone's plugged in, it'll run it on that native device. But one of the big big wins for me was before when I used to do this I'd have to go and run the app okay make a change in HTML you know recompile the app put it back on the device so who's who here has heard of live reload any fans oh there's a bunch of you that haven't oh yeah okay so if you haven't live reload automatically reloads your browser to see all your new changes either CSS or JavaScript so you hit save in your in your text editor and the app reloads automatically. So you don't have to go and run that cycle. You don't have to go rerun, uh, you know, ionic run, whatever. It just happens automagically. And we all like magic, right? We do. And if you don't, you will. <laughs> so um, one other thing that I've heard so much about and I praise so much is ionic has such great documentation. When you go to the website right away, you're blown away by how many examples there are, how many how many different people have contributed to help you understand how to use it. So instead of like recreating it, I'm just going to use it. So some of the things it just gives you is a bunch of different components. You can see right away it's giving me a header. And I'm just going to scroll through these real quickly because you'll probably want to go look at them yourself. But it gives you a bunch of different things that you'll set up. Like, for example, all the different buttons you'll need. All the different colors, you know. Uh, one thing I really like, full buttons. Bunch of different size outline buttons. Like everything you'd ever want to think about using, they've already, for the most part, created. Uh, so Ben Sperry is one of the founders. Uh, he's a designer. So he's really put a lot of think, or a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of ideas on how to make a really nice native UI. And so he's packaged this all up for you guys to do. Because I'm a developer. I don't know much about design. He did that for me. So <laughs> I'm kind of just riding off his coattails here. But you can, you can go play with yourself. But, but I just want to point out a couple spots. Um, it's just, it gives you everything that you think of that you'd want to go recreate, like I did two years ago. Here it is, folks. So moving along, there's a couple more controls they give you. So one, if you're an iOS user, you know about these active or these action sheets that pop up. Ionic gives you that tool right away. So all you got to do is say, you know, Ionic action sheet show. Boom. That pops up. Looks native. It gives you uh, event handlers. So if I click share, I get a, the handler that you know the share button was clicked. That's one less thing I have to build. Uh, that's pretty neat. And it comes with like again that delegate. So you'll use this delegate, and you just say show or you know fire this button or whatever. That's awesome. There's side menus that I just showed you. It comes with a delegate. That you can say show here or don't don't allow it to slide or don't allow it to open. That's pretty cool. Another one, slide boxes. How many people have ever tried to recreate a slide box in here? Okay, so nobody's honest? Okay. <laughs> but anytime you do, it's like you're recreating your will. And you're just, I just want to get this done. So they give you a slide box. You just, you can throw in images on there. You can throw in HTML. You can throw whatever you want, folks. And it comes with a delegate. That's pretty cool. You can say, go to slide three. Or don't allow to slide anymore. Or you have it timed. Boom. Uh, so now you're, you're probably wondering, what's the code look like? So let's look at some of the code. Right away, I talked about that, uh, the app.js file. As you'll see, if you're familiar with Angular, can we get a quick show of hands? Who's familiar with Angular here? OK. So for those of you who aren't, typically what you'll do is you'll, you'll say, I want a module here at the top. And you'll, you'll name the module. 
And then you'll say like, what other packages you want to bring in or modules you want to import, right? It's, it's dependency injection for the most part. So they start you off including your modules for controllers and services. So that's one less thing you have to do. Next thing, it gives you a run here. And this is going to be run when the app starts. So we gives us this nice ready event. So right away, I can see my app's ready to go. All, everything's been loaded. Let's start doing stuff. So it gives you a nice place to do that. It also, uh, if you've used iOS, you know there's a little status bar at the top? They've handled that too. So in iOS 7 and 8, they made it really annoying where it lays on top of everything. So they made it where you can either overlay or not overlay. So Ionic, again, has saved you another, yet another headache. Then it sets up uh, this configuration. So you can go set up all your different states. So here, I've got my tab state. The, again, this is just from the boilerplate, so there's nothing fancy. So I've got a tab, and then within each different tab, I have a view for that tab. So I have tab.dash. So I showed you earlier when I, when I tap the dashboard button, that tab, it loads in this tab dash view with this controller. In AngularJS, we use controllers that you know, handle the interaction between the page. So it's setting up uh, all my templates with my controllers here. That's pretty cool. So I can set up all my different states. I can have nested states. Let's say like I'd have an you know, app dot, you know, logged in state, and then I'd have every app that once they're logged in, different states they can view. That's pretty nice. So uh, that was just that. Uh, woo. That was the app.js file. So we'll dive in. It gives you this controller.js file as well. Or I'm sorry, the service.js file that sets up a service here. So I have a friend service that I can call from any controller now. So in AngularJS, for those that you don't know, you, you'll have a service that's like reusable code between controllers, if that makes any sense. So in a controller, you'd inherit a service, if you will, and then you can use all this stuff. So in this case, we have uh, the get friends, or the all friends method. So that anywhere in my app, now if I want to pull this either from a web service, or you know, from local storage, or what have you, I just have this service set up for me. So if I want to start coding, let's say I'll make the uh, Thunder Plains service now. And friends, well, let's see here. It should just say everyone, right? But right away, it's giving you this service that you just got to start plugging in what you need. That's nice. Hold your applause, please. Hold your applause. <laughs> uh, but moving along, uh, lastly, it gives you this controller. So I was talking about this controller. So for those of you that don't know Angular, here you'll see I'm inheriting my, or I'm pulling in friends. So that friends service that I just showed you is being pulled in from this controller. So now if I have multiple controllers, like down here, let's say, oh, on account, I need to pull in friends. I've got friends now. Isn't AngularJS awesome? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't have any friends. That's funny. So. Uh, I talked before about plugins, and so there's all these native plugins that let you do all this different stuff. So you're probably wondering, where do I find these plugins? There's a leprechaun that has them all, and you'll never find them. <laughs> Kidding. No, there's a Cordova plugin registry that I helped create here in like January of this year that you can just go in there. It's kind of like NPM. Uh, you just search for the plugin you want, you know, a camera or a GPS or what have you. There's bazillions out there. There's another one that's plugin registry. Uh, it's hosted by a guy in uh, England. He's a really smart dude. And he's got one that helps find plugins. Uh, and lastly, PhoneGap, as I said before, has a build service that they give you plugins as well. Uh, lastly, GitHub. If you trust other people's stuff for the most part, you can go there. At your own risk, of course. Uh, then there's this idea. Let's say I've just created an app. And I want all of you all to play with it. But I, don't, I can't just sit there and give you that install file unless you want to come plug your phone in my computer, uh, which you probably don't. So how do I get somebody else to see that app? You can download this PhoneGap developer app. And what you do is, is the app loads up and it says you type in a URL. And so you'll just type a URL of where that you know, uh, PhoneGap app or Ionic app is at. And then boom, you've got that app in your browser. Uh, there's another one Ionic's coming out with called the Ionic View app. So let's say I create an app and I push it up to my Ionic account. And then I added each one of you to that. So you just have to go download the Ionic View, account, or Ionic View app, 
log in, and then it show my app there, and you just, boom, tap that. Now you've got that on your phone, and you're playing with that right there, and you can say, hey, dude, this sucks. Or, hey, this is awesome. I really like what you've done. So right away, you're getting that you know, user feedback immediately. No, hey, give me your provisioning profile so I can add your UUID. You'll never have to say that. That's cool. Uh, but most importantly, you're not restricted to just pushing this thing out to the web. So let's say I just push out all my files to the web, and you popped open Safari or Chrome, and you typed in that URL just with that browser, you can still use that app. It may not have all those native functionalities, but it's that app for the most part. That's a huge win. Do that with your Objective-C app. Let's do it right now. Show me. Exactly. So um, let's say now I do want you to install the app. You know, I want each and one of you, you're going to have to give me your UUID. We're back to that. I just lied to you. I'm sorry. But uh, you can use PhoneGap build service, which is kind of neat. You'll push your, uh, your, your HTML and JavaScript stuff up to PhoneGap, and they will build it for you in whatever platform you say. And then other people can just go use that barcode scanner thing that nobody uses, you know, scan that thing, and boom, they've got the app loaded. That's pretty neat. Or I can upload a test flight or hockey app, which is just delivery services. And then you can go and sign up for that and install that app or the IPA or JAR file or what have you. So you can get those native plugins. So let's say uh, you're building a <coughs> Facebook integration. Well, I can't just do that through the web. You know, you have to get that native Facebook app to load or what have you. So you'd install it through one of these. But uh, I've had a few questions on, like, how do we get that app there and how do we do that? So I built a little tool called Cordova Deploy, which is, you know, only a million dollars. But uh, you can go and get it for free, honestly. But you can download that and then just say Cordova Deploy, you know, minus minus test flight. And boom, now it'll just read your test flight settings and push right out for you. So you don't even have to open Xcode or Eclipse. That's cool. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, it's, uh, I'd love some feedback on it, too. So please try it. But going forward, you're probably wondering, something's not working right. How can I figure out what's not working right? So luckily for you and I, there's full debugger support. If you're on iOS, there's a nice feature in Safari that you go to this develop menu, and you just pop open your inspector. So you're already using inspector, hopefully. You can just use that on your iOS app. You're already used to it. Why not? If you're using Android, just use Chrome. Bet you didn't know that was already built in. Or if you're using an older Android, and I feel for you on this one, you'll have to use this tool called Winery which is, it just puts some hooks in that report back JavaScript to some URL, which that you'll do it. Hopefully you never do. Let's just stop there. Don't do an old Android. <laughs> Let it die. Uh, but most importantly, if you're, if you're running the app just in your browser, you're using the tools, again, like I just told you, you know, Safari Inspector or uh, the Chrome developer tools. Um, but let's say you want to figure out errors that are happening in the field. What you're using right now, keep using it. If you're using New Relic or Rollbar or what have you, you can still use it here. There's nothing stopping you. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of wins here, right? So I'm done with my slides, but I want to hop into some code, maybe do some building, get you guys riled up. So uh, let's, let's stop with the slides, and let's hop in. So I have a little app that I made. I just called it Redis Chat because I'm not a very good namer. But basically, it's just a chat app that uses Redis as the, as the back end. So here it is. I've got a Myonic app running here in the browser. It's all Josh, password, blah. Cool. So I'm logged in. Notice my nice UI here. I've done nothing to do that except for put the Ionic controls on there. It says I've joined. You know, I've set a message. Cool. I can debug it just like I normally always do here. Nothing fancy there, right? So next thing is I'm in my uh, emulator here. And I'm running my native app. So this is Josh iOS. Blah, blah, blah. Boom. So you see in my web browser, I'm connected. I see my message. I can't type, but I type anyway. Boom. Wow. That's pretty neat, right, folks? And if I want to debug that, let's say something's not working right. I pop up in Safari, I go to Developer, iPhone Simulator, boom. So now right away, you can see 
like native debugging almost. I can type commands here in JavaScript that fire in my emulator. I can view anything on my page, you know, click inspect, tap on it, boom, it shows me right where it's at. Yeah, that's cool. So what about the Android side? So I've got my Android emulator here. Let's try this, uh, Josh Android. Boom, oh. Oh no, it's not working. So what do I do? I go over here, Chrome inspect, it shows my device. And just for the record, this works for uh, a native device plugged in. Sadly, I don't have this working right now, but you can use that with a native device, either iOS or Android. So Safari will still work with your connected device. So I click inspect. Now I've got my nice little native Chrome inspector, and it's telling me right away, hey man, your poster fell into bother. That's cool. I can plug in my Android, it would tell me that right away. Luckily, I knew this was a bug. I'm just kind of doing that to show you guys and show off at the same time. But uh, so you get live debugging, though. That's that's pretty rad, you guys. But uh, so far, are there any questions? Is anybody confused? Yes, sir. Is the choice of SAS <coughs> set in the goal file? Can we replace that with our preprocessor choice, like Stylus or something else? You'd have to do that from your gulp file, yeah. and you'd have to include, but you could. It, it, it's, it's all been, uh, determined by the gulp file? Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah, so the question was, uh, are you restricted to the, using Compass or whatnot? No. You can change it if you're uh, you know, filling that gutsy. You can, for sure. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, incredibly impressive. This is awesome. Um, I'm just curious, I mean, to derail the uh, code demo here, but um, submitting to Apple and Google, I'm just curious, having never done it, do they, especially Apple, stop that in any way, shape, or form, something that is not truly an in app? Uh, so the question was, uh, does Apple scoff at these apps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, or, sir. Or otherwise deny them. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, so uh, with my startup, we pushed, I th uh, before, I think we pushed about five or six apps to the App Store. Uh, we had a few, you know, pushbacks, but it was just like fix this or put some legal stuff or you know what have you, but no. Um, but that's a good question. And to follow up with that, uh, another question I'd ask probably from one of you guys is, you know, how do you get this Cordova app to the App Store? So you're still going to have to use Xcode and you've got to go on there and do the archive functionality. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, same thing with Eclipse, you'll still have to compile it and put your, uh, your keys in there. But Onyx, they're working on getting that done for you. So not to spoil it for him, but that's coming out in the future release. Um, also, you'd probably wonder, uh, you asked like, if they scoff at you, no. Because I think the App Store itself is just a web view. So themselves, they're doing it. <laughs> but to, to further clarify, and I want to make this very clear, is Cordova is an open source project, but it's funded by a lot of different developers that are paid from huge companies, so like Google. Google's, I think they have four or five people that work on Cordova for Android specifically. IBM has some on there. Uh, I think Apple's given a few. Microsoft now has some. Uh, Adobe's got a whole bunch of guys working on this. So this is very well supported, and I don't think it's going anywhere. And you're probably wondering, are they always playing catch up? In a way they are, but we all are, right? Like, that's why you're here right now, is you're trying to catch up with everybody else, but so am I. And that's okay. Uh, but to let it know that Cordova is very strong, uh, I went to ApacheCon in April and I met some of the core contributors. You know, I pushed some code myself to Cordova, some bug fixes and stuff. So if you guys want, you can go peek at the code, you can go improve it. I thought that alone is awesome. But do I have any other questions? Um, I know everyone's gonna shake their head, but what about Windows Phone support? There is, there is. Uh, I, don't, I didn't cover much of that. Um, so there are some Windows guys that do it. Uh, I can't think of his name at the time, but he's very active and he does a lot of like Windows Phone pushes and things. But you can. I I just have a Mac and I've never touched Windows in like two years, so I'm sorry. But yes, you can. Full support. What about Firefox OS? There is. So there are native Firefox plugins. So the the Cordova team has pushed uh, plugins. Uh, so the question was. Uh, does Firefox OS, is it supported? The answer was yes, and the team actively pushes stuff. So I think there's like around 100 developers from all over the world 
that are pushing stuff for international support. Um, but like I said, BlackBerry is one of them. Tizen Phone, if you've ever heard of that one. That's a big overseas one. It's all supported by this. And Ionic just sits on top of Cordova. So yeah, it'll run. Good question. Any other questions? Is Cordova the future? <laughs> or at least the way we get, is phone gap the way we get there to? I'm no oracle here. <laughs> I'm just presenting. <laughs> but I would say, um, like, there's been some good posts, like DHH posted before, like, you know, building hybrid apps and how that's kind of going. Because, you know, unless you have the money to build a code base for each device, then you're going to be, like, a new release or iOS 8 comes out or whatever, you've got to go rebuild everything. With Cordova, you just update your styles to make it look like the new <coughs> version, right? So I, I don't think it's like the future, but I think it's a good step in the future. Like write once, run anywhere. Like that's kind of nice. Because your time's important. Why not use it the best that you can? That's the idea. Oh, you go ahead. What, what are some things that you wish you could do or do differently? <clears throat> uh, so the question was, what are some things that I wish it could do or could do differently? Um, That's a stumper. Um, I wish it could make me a million dollars. To answer your question, I, I would say it for, my first answer would have been uh, better native plugin support, but Ionic already knocked that out of the park. Uh, so there's this project that they have. Uh, it's called NG Cordova. Oh, I don't have internet, but uh, NG Cordova, they wrap all these native plugins, and they verify that they work, and they give you promises. So if you've ever used promises in JavaScript, which I hope you are, it gives you full promise support for any of your plugins. So if you were to go use these plugins right now, it would give you a success and a fail callback. Cordova has just wrapped those to give you, uh, you know, promises so you know whether or not it's failed, and then it runs synchronously like we'd like to do. So that would have been my answer, but they've knocked that out of the park. Local storage. Question is, what about local storage? Full support. You can do uh, the index DB or file management out of the box. But yeah, I use local storage quite a bit. You can do session storage. It's all saved as you like suspend your app. There's a native plugin that goes and saves all your local storage, either to iCloud or your app. That's a win. Are there any performance hits doing like a WebView wrapper? Or it, at this point, is it negligible? Uh, so the question was, are there any performance hits from wrapping the app in a web view? Uh, previously, there was. Uh, they've come a long way. Uh, so all this, this native bridge that they've built, it's pretty well now. And since you know, devices are so fast now, you don't have to worry about the interpreting costs from JavaScript. Like, stuff's running so fast these days, you can't really notice it. Unless you're some like iOS or you know, Android, you know, I can see that it took a half a millisecond longer. Cool, but my users don't care. That's a good question. Yes, sir. I don't know if you're familiar with the Kindle UI mobile, but I think they try to create some uh, Angular directives for Angular. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering how that compares with uh, Ionic. Uh, so the question was, how does Kindo UI compare to Ionic? I might not be too well versed to say that. Because uh, I built my own, and then I hopped into Ionic. So I've never played with Kindo UI, but I've heard good things. Um, but based on my shirt, Ionic, man. Ionic. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I've, I've gone and lost track of pretty much everything you've said here. building are on top of it. So the line really is Cordova is just a web view that you can load anything that you want. Ionic is all the UI controls, okay. all the JavaScript wrapped in all the Angular JS, nice functionality we love. So the line, the, there's a distinct line, but it's blurring because they're adding in like the keyboard plugin to help you with that weird keyboard stuff that goes on. Uh, and they're wrapping plugins now for Cordova and they're verifying the plugins, which is really good. So uh, just as a heads up, there are some plugins that you guys are going to try to use, kind of like myself, and you'll go out there and you're like, this plugin's not working, or there's no documentation for it. 
that's kind of you know, the state because it's just you know guys like me or whoever else out there just pushing plugins. But Cordova uh, or the Ionic team's coming and wrapping those and giving us what's good. So the answer is it's kind of blurred, but Cordova is just a web view. So Ionic's all the stuff that feels native? Yep, Ionic's pretty much all of this stuff. Well, I guess I should have said all of that stuff. <laughs> Good question. Any other questions? Yeah. Did you save your notes slideshow around there? Where yeah, I'll, I'll put, they're all HTML, um, and it has Ionic code in it too. Uh, so I'll push that out and tweet it. Um, but yeah, definitely. If anybody wants it, I'll, I'll get with the Thunderplanes team and publish it so you guys can hit it. And all my, like I said, all my slides are in HTML. And one thing I want to point out, there's little like links here that you can click on. So if you're like you're curious on what I was talking about, where to find it, it's all in the slides. Thank you, though. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, why would you choose a Ionic over something like Xamarin? What would be the? Uh, I don't. I don't do a lot of C sharp, and C sharp is Xamarin for the most part, right? Um, it's a preference. Uh, so I talked earlier in my slides, you know, there's like the translation ones, right? There's like Ruby or um, Titanians for JavaScripters that compiles to like native stuff. And then there's Xamarin. It's just a preference, really. I'm, I, don't, I don't think there's one that's, you can't say one's better than the other. It's like apples and oranges, right? If you prefer C Sharp, you know, Xamarin's a good choice. Uh, if you really like doing, you know, web stuff, here you go. But more importantly, I'd say that the one up that Cordova has is I can run this in my browser. And I can't really run a Xamarin app in my browser. So that's kind of a, a win, I'd say, for Cordova. Because I could just go and push that app out. And, and if, say, I didn't want to build the app after all, I just push it out on the web and people just use it in the web. So I'd say that's kind of a win. Any other questions? No questions? You have no problems? You guys understand everything? Yes, that's what I wanted. So uh, again, I, I mentioned that you've all won the raffle, so you can all get a sticker if you'd like, an Ionic sticker. But if you have no other questions, you know, thank you guys. I hope, you, I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope you go out here and make some Ionic apps.